Hey everybody, and welcome to the 17th episode of QTVC Live. My name is Julia Arredondo, and I am your host. And we are broadcasting live from Chicago's Humboldt Park neighborhood on this 19th day of April 2020. It is the eve of 420. And for, I think many of y'all know that 420 is a countercultural holiday that celebrates the use of marijuana. Um, but back in the day, it used to be like an underground holiday that many of us celebrated, sometimes in secrecy, sometimes loudly, um, pertaining to like either the recreational use or the spiritual use or other uses, other ways of using marijuana as a lifestyle. Now, of course, things have changed and that is sort of the basis of today's episode, but things have changed because 420 has become big business. Marijuana has become big business. And we're gonna be talking about that on the show today um, with our very special guest, Liz Marie, AKA Mota Mami, who is gonna be joining the call in just a few minutes. Who's already made your request, Liz, thank you for being on time, that rocks. Um, so once again, this is QTVC Live. We are a, a sales platform for underrepresented artists, underrepresented makers, um, but also discussing um, creative labor, value, and also like talking about that openly and what being a sustainable creative entails. Like, what does that take? Um, so I'm gonna move on with this episode. I do wanna get the ground rules situated though. So number one. There will, be, there will be no haggles, there will be no discounts, because we respect the time and labor of the artists. So without anyone's consent, we will not facilitate any haggles or anything like that live on the show. Like, no, this isn't the fucking flea market. This is business. We're talking business here, so respect the prices that we request. Number two, if, well, number two, please find us on Venmo at QTVC Live. That's find us on Venmo at QTVC Live if you're interested in making a purchase. Please keep in mind that I work with small businesses, um, startups, entrepreneurs, um, who make small batch goods. So if we sell out, we sell out. Please find us on Venmo right now if you're interested in purchasing some of the goods we're about uh, to present. Um, but we're not only going to be talking goods today, we're going to be talking uh, Illinois specific laws, um, the cannabis industry with Mota Mami, and also how that affects people of color, femmes of color, and um, sort of what the evolution of that industry is looking like today. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, once again, find us on Venmo at QTVC Live to make your purchase. If you don't have a Venmo account, that's okay. Find me at QTVC Live at gmail.com. Send me an email. We'll get your issue situated and we'll be able to process your payment from there. Finally, number three, um, holler at us in the comments. Like I already see y'all rolling through. Thank you for being here today. Um, but if you have questions, let us know. We'll be able to respond to you uh, in real time. If you have any shout outs, if you just want to say hi and wave, that's cool too. It's always nice to know that you're there. So I'm going to transition into split screen because we're respecting the rules for quarantine. Um, Liz Marie, I am coming to welcome you on the show. Let me just transition really quickly. And also I have music today by the band Ohm, who's one of my favorite stoner metal bands. Um, so here we go. Liz. I'm coming at ya. All right, here we go. I got, let's see, what coffee and wine today. All right, Liz, I'm just waiting for Liz. Thanks for all the love. Hey! Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great, Liz. I'm late, but I'm great. <laughs> it's all good. I was expecting it to be late. It wouldn't be a 420 Eve stoner. <laughs> uh episode if we were on time julia so thank you for the reminder liz um liz so everybody qtvc live cuties thanks for joining us i'm here with liz marie aka mota mami so if you don't know mota mami please check mota mami out right now on instagram um oh i need to pin a comment liz do you want to give a quick introduction about who you are what you do what you want to talk about on today's episode Certainly. So hello, everybody. Thank you for stopping in to QTBC Live. And first of all, Julia, I always have to shout you out and give you a thank you for taking your time to give, you know, creative space and a platform, because um, that's really difficult to find nowadays, especially one that is authentic and not looking for, like, not doesn't have an ulterior motive. So first, shout out to you, Julia. Um, thank you. Of course, of course. And so I am with Mami, as Julia has said. Has said um, I am a, a Chicago-based cannabis advocate, cannabis creative and creator. Um, my main purpose as a cannabis advocate and a creator is to allow the knowledge and education around cannabis to be more equal, to um, make some level of 
equality in a very unequal and disparate uh, industry. Um, I got into the cannabis industry because of the lack of representation of people of color, women of color, femmes of color, queer individuals. Um, it was just a very stagnant and very um, monotone industry considering the history. Uh, so a lot of what my work focuses around not only is about, you know, becoming a advocate in the industry, but taking that knowledge and information that is very exclusive to the industry and bringing it to the people and breaking down those barriers. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about my sale. That's quite the intro. Um, so thank you for sharing. Of course. Um, yeah, uh, Liz, what are you doing for 420? Do you celebrate in any, any special way? Um, <laughs> I'm getting contact high, thank you. <laughs> all for you, girl. All for you. Um, What's interesting about 420 as um, somebody who is pretty much an everyday consumer and mm -hmm. um, cannabis is, is a part of my day-to-day -day life um, and lifestyle. Uh, so for 420, it's it's like every day is 420 for me, which, yeah. which is a privilege because not a lot of people can live that way. Um, as a, a professional in the industry, um, lots of, for yeah. those of don't know I am also a manager of a local cannabis dispensary medical cannabis dispensary in Chicago um, so for the past three years my life around 420 has been um, operationally making sure that the store is ready for 420 so for 420 tomorrow that is what we're going to be doing um, even in the midst of COVID um, I honestly think my job is more important now than ever um, ensuring that we can bring people a fun and safe 420, but do it in a way that's responsible. Um, because like you mentioned, big business is now definitely infiltrated and a giant part of cannabis. And unfortunately, with that safety can go out the door. Um, I am blessed that I can really advocate and do things the way that I want to at my store. So I'm not pushing any barriers. We're going to be safe, but we're going to be having a good time. So tomorrow I'm going to be working, hustling with my team at the store and then coming home and probably lighting up several, several J's to celebrate <laughs> a, a day well done. So. Yeah. Hey, that's great. You know, that's great. So <laughs> once again, QTBC live cuties, thanks for tuning in. I'm here with Liz Marie, AKA Morta Mami. And Liz is going to be talking to us um, just about general cannabis industry information, but also Liz is not only an activist, an educator, Liz is also a creator. So Liz will be sharing some of the products that she has produced that, that Liz sells um, under the motamamihai.com uh, shop you. interface. Um, Liz, what, yeah, is there anything else you wanted to sort of talk about industry-wise before we lead into the products? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could definitely, I, I definitely wanted to take some time to, to talk about the industry and not even just um, the medical industry, but also just about uh, cannabis in Illinois in general um, mm -hmm. and some of the options available to our Illinois and Chicago specific uh, viewers today. Um, one really big thing for, for me in cannabis is not only, you know, promoting a way where people can safely uh, acquire their medicine, um, whether that be through acquiring your medical cannabis card. Um, in Illinois, now there's over 41 conditions that allow individuals to apply for their medical cannabis card. Um, those conditions include anxiety and chronic pain, which are the two of the most recent ones, which I think um, for probably most of us in, in this live right now can say that as, you know, a part of your lived experience is going to be uh, is going to result in anxiety, is going to result in PTSD, um, particularly in communities of color. I think adding those conditions were a really big breakdown of barriers for people to be able to get their card. Because uh, when the program first started three years ago, you pretty much had to be uh, terminally ill in order to be able to get your card. And you had to go through a background check, you had to go through, you know, doctor's recommendations, there was just so many um, obstacles that made it really pricey. Um, and luckily, that's no longer the case. Um, it, it still costs money. Don't don't get me wrong. Um, the application, depending on how long you apply for, if it's one year, it's like $100. It can go up to like $250, $300 for a three year um, card. Uh, but it's still a lot more, uh, it's, it's easier than it was back in the day. It's, it's more accessible than it was. The fingerprint and background check, I think that's one thing that I always really like to highlight that is no longer a requirement or a necessity of getting your medical card. Um, it was 
probably one of the biggest turnoffs for me when I first got into the industry uh, about getting a card is that you have to go through this kind of like criminal check in order to be able to get access uh, to medicine, which is kind of bullshit because for most other medicines, you don't have to go through that process. They just feed you the medicine regardless. Uh, but for, of course, the medicine that is the most, um, in, in my opinion, in the least, the least harmful and can have the most wide variety of benefits and is already present in your body, they made it more difficult for it to, for people to be able to get to. So now luckily that's not the case. Um, you can finish your application online and you can get a provisional card in less than 24 hours now, uh, which is freaking awesome. Like you don't have to wait to get your medicine before you had to wait like three months to get a physical card. Now you wait 24 hours after you submit an application online and then you're good to shop the next day. Um, so that's just one thing. Okay, we have a quick question, actually. Yes. Um, from Chica Ari. Um, Ariel Ew. from Chicana Healing Elements is an mm -hmm. awesome business entity. Please check them out. Um, but Ari asked uh, what the benefits of getting the card is now since things have gone recreational here in Illinois. So good question. I think that's um, something that a lot of people have on their mind. Uh, the biggest benefit, and there's there's several, but the biggest benefit I think is going to be the price difference. So mm -hmm. in Chicago, the taxation of recreational cannabis is pretty much the highest that is that that you can see in the nation. Um, you get taxed by THC percentages on a product. So the higher the potency of the product, the higher price you're going to have to pay. Um, for my recreational purchase or recreational purchasers that don't come in, a product that is base price $50, $55, you'll walk out paying $85 for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're going to see a minimum of 10 to $15 slapped on in taxes. Um, as a medical patient, you pay 2.5% tax on top of a base price, which is fairly minimum, uh, as opposed to anywhere between 10 and 25% base tax on an adult use product. Plus, then you have municipality taxes, Cook County taxes, state taxes. Everybody wants to get in on getting some money from legal weed. So uh, definitely price point is one of the biggest things. If, if, it's, if you're using it as medicine, it's not sustainable to be paying 80, 90 bucks for a product that you can spend half that amount on. Um, and then the second biggest thing is product availability. Uh, you see a very limited amount of medicine um, available to the adult use purchasers. It's going to be a slim list of edibles, maybe one or two strains of flowers, maybe pre-rolls, and um, maybe some RSO or concentrates. Uh, and that's because it's not for people who are using it by, like, by definition as medicine. It's a recreational product. It's like going to the liquor store and, and getting, you know, a, a bottle of wine or something at the end of Friday night. So we need to ensure that the more, that, that products that are used more medicinally are ready, readily available for individuals in the medical program. So if you're looking for a wider variety and definitely more medicinally based products, um, getting your medical card is gonna be the way to go. Thank you. That is incredibly informative. Once again, y'all, we're here with Liz Marie, AKA Motamami. So thanks for tuning in. And Liz, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Please continue okay. like this. This is you're fascinating. Fine. I'm glad that you pay attention to the questions because my ass is smoking and I probably <laughs> would So you're doing your job phenomenally, Julia. Thank you. What? Uh, but the, the comments have been really like active. So I just want to say like your following base is on top of what you're doing. I hope you're recognizing that and really proud of yourself. Like you're doing thanks. awesome stuff. Thanks. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate, you know, opportunity, like I said, to to be able to share this information. Um, I'm definitely excited to highlight my products and to highlight my, my creative side. Um, but my, my main goal is always to, is to be able to spread knowledge and spread information. Um, and like I said, just break down those barriers. There's a lot of shit that people don't know. And it's, it's unfortunate that the access to that knowledge isn't as, as available as I would hope it would be. But that's why, you know, individuals like myself and other advocates in the industry and other, and other advocacy groups um, are responsible for filling the gaps because uh, you don't see that coming too much from corporate cannabis. Um, and when you do, it's just not enough to fill the gap. There's just so much of a disparity in that, in that access to knowledge that that's why we're here, y'all. So I'm glad. I'm happy to be able to do so. So I, so this is funny. I had some pre-rolls wrapped up or these are, these are King Palms. I can actually pull one out because I love, I'm happy to promote King Palms because this is a really dope product. King Palms are tobacco free.
something that burns a little bit slower and a, big, a little bit heavier, King, King Palms are a really nice option. Um, and then they actually have a corn husk filter, which I don't know if you can see. Wow. I can see that pretty good there. So the airflow on it is super, super um, just, uh, you get a very large airflow, um, which sometimes for blunts can be a pain in the ass because you normally don't put in a filter to blunts or I mean, most people that I've ever smoked a blunt with, you don't. Um, so you definitely get a uh, easier airflow with these. You don't have any type of additives, no tobacco. That's really why I stopped smoking blunts because that tobacco uh, just like left over. It makes my lips feel tingly and then it just gives you a whole different type of high that is not what I'm looking for. Um, so yeah, I'm smoking King Balm. What's inside of the King Palms? I'm not 100% positive. These were King Palms that I had left over from a uh, Space Babes market. So you can't let you can't let medicine go to waste. So even though they're, they might be a little old, still perfectly good. <laughs> I was uh, I went to the post office yesterday and I found a like perfectly wrapped joint on the ground, like a cone joint. And I'm hey. like, yeah, what I felt like this. The gods yeah. are blessing you, mama. <laughs> yeah, it felt like a video game too. Like I'm picking up all these little tools. It was weird. It's in quarantine. Like I had to put it in quarantine. Right, I'm gonna wait five days. Yeah. Um, but I was like, what? Who drops one of these? People forget. And yeah. I mean, if, if they were smoking a few of those, it, it, it's probably an easier explanation as to why <laughs> why it wound up on the ground. So, yeah. It, yeah. If you're if you're in true like smoker like cannabis smoker spirit, it's it's about sharing. So mm -hmm. that was meant to make its way to you. So that's good. <laughs> um. No, this all of this information is super interesting. I know state to state is different, but you specialize in Illinois. Yes. Um, okay. The uh, show. Well, can I ask you just a personal question? Like, of course. What does the underground look like right now? You know what I'm saying? Like, what do dealers, like person to person businesses, do? You know what I'm saying? Like, um, how is this affecting that? And is that good? You know, because I'm thinking of peer-to-peer -peer is probably, you know, a more diverse crowd, right? Like, yeah. So, I mean, that's going to be a much more diverse experience. Um, mm -hmm. Like the black market, just because it's, it's been, it's existed for so much longer than the, the legal cannabis market, right? So you have OGs and individuals who have pretty much built up the underground market. And then at the same time, created the foundation for the um, legal market as it stands. So I know there was a lot of conversations around the time of legalization that I, that I was hearing um, about like a lot of people being like, oh, my dealer isn't gonna, isn't gonna deal anymore or um, th them just being completely fearful that they were gonna lose out on the black market. Um, but I think if you circle back to, the, to a few minutes ago talking about the prices of legal weed versus mm -hmm the access and the price of, um, you know, black market cannabis, uh, there, there's always going to be benefits and there's always going to be ways for the black market to thrive. Um, it's, it's lasted this long, so I don't foresee it going anywhere. It's just a matter of the same way when you go into a dispensary and you choose your dispensary or you choose your, the cultivators and the different products that you're going to select by, their, you know, by their accountability, by the quality of their products, by the quality of their morale, or I mean, at least that's, that's how I decide where I choose to shop, uh, because I want to be a conscious consumer, you know, if I'm going into a dispensary, I'm not going to necessarily support a dispensary that only pays their cultivation workers $13 an hour, I won't name names. Um, but, <laughs> but I'm not going to go in and I'm going to uh, support a, a business like that, I'm going to try to support, you know, business that um, support their workers, that uplift their workers, and curate their products that are good for their patients and their consumers. The same goes for your for your black market. You know, there are people out here on the black market that are just out for a quick buck. But then, oppositely, there are individuals who that like this is their livelihood. This is this is their business. Just because there isn't a business license behind it doesn't mean that their business is not credible. If anything, that means that they have a more sustainable model that can exist outside of you know regular capitalistic um, confines. Uh, it still somewhat obviously has to fit within that model because it's an exchange for money. But at the end of the day, I mean, if you know who you're shopping with, I think there is ways for you to always find somebody who is going to take care of you and going to have your best interests at the end of the day. That's, 
that is the best answer I could possibly ask for. <laughs> fascinating. That's fascinating. Um, you can't disregard the underground because if you do, you would be silly to do such. I mean, <laughs> if you look at the fact, like if you look at the the legal industry, whether it be in Illinois, California, Michigan, um, the people that are bringing you fire product, like fire weed, like the that are pushing the boundaries of genetics, that are bringing you phenomenal like operations and customer services service. Some of them may come from a corporate background. More often than not, the people who are founding it, they're they're born and bred from the underground. Because where else are they going to get that that knowledge? Like you know, you go into a retail business and you could say, "Hey, I'm I'm a I'm a manager at Macy's because I have 12 years of retail experience from Victoria's Secret and Jewel Osco." Da da da. If you step into a, an interview yeah. or a cultivator position and they ask you what your experience is, you could have zero educational like background. You, maybe you took some, some classes in horticulture, but if you say, but I grew in California for five years, or I grew in Colorado, or I've had a home grow and I've managed this, this, and that, is that not just incredible? Yeah, that's great. I didn't think about that, but you're right. Like the business industry hasn't been recreational or legalized long enough. Like everybody who's a pro is a pro from the underground. That's fascinating. Yeah. And, it's and you can kind of tell the difference from people who aren't, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, I think there's a certain passion and a certain, um, just like reason for certain individuals to be involved in, in the weed game, to be involved in the cannabis game. And if you're somebody who, like truly sees, you know, ganja as medicine, sees it as a way to, to like bridge gaps between people to make people better, you're gonna, your practices are gonna be totally different between somebody who just sees cannabis as dollar signs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the case for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but let's, let's transition to talking about conscious cannabis and like your product line. Um, oh. I've been hearing you use this this way of talking about cannabis, like conscious cannabis use. And like, what does that mean? I mean, you have talked a little bit about like who you give your business to. Like, I think that's yes. a very conscious approach. What, in your words, what does that entail? So I think, especially now that cannabis and marijuana is transi transitioning into a mainstream light, um, when things become cool, you can start to disconnect from what the meaning of whatever it might be is. And I think one of the reasons that I started Motamami was because I saw a shit ton of like cannabis accounts or weed accounts that were totally disconnected from the history or the reality and the possibilities of using marijuana. Like it was just like a uh, like a very skinny white girl, like that you couldn't see her face, holding a joint, like looking over her shoulder, oh, and being like, breathe, you know. And it was it was just so disconnected from my lived experience and from like the lived experience of people who were important to me, um, and also just my practice with cannabis. Like weed wasn't buying, wasn't about necessarily buying the like name brand strains or finding the coolest new product out there. It was about utilizing, um, you know, cannabis as medicine, taking it as something that I would consume before meditation or ritual practice and allowing it and it would allow me to transcend. So it's, it's about taking a moment to be, I think gratitude is a really big um, value that I hold in my professional and my personal life. And if you don't take a moment for gratitude, there's no way that you can be conscious about what you're doing. Um, so for me about the cannabis, consum like cannabis consumption and a way to do it conscientiously is always to ensure that you have gratitude and that you give thanks for you know, the individuals who have come before us that are incarcerated for cannabis use, who maybe have lost their lives, lost family members, um, mm -hmm. for like the indigenous ancestors who got you know their their cannabis plants burned in the fields but now those same colonizers fast forward hundreds of years from now are using that same product and that same you know uh, that say that that same product to profit off of mm -hmm. um so just taking that all into account and i think it allows the medicine to work for you in a different way than if you just blindly consume it 
I often think like when people are mindlessly consuming cannabis and then can like talk about their experience, it's it's not a true experience because you're missing out on one whole portion of the cannabis experience if you don't give thanks. So I, I, I think for me, that's really about that's that's what the foundation of con conscious cannabis consumption is. I mean, you can get into like the science of it as well and like how, you know, cannabis is literally it fits like a puzzle piece with your body when you consume it. Um, there are cannabinoids and you have an, a, a system called the endocannabinoid system. I like to bring up the endocannabinoid system pretty much every opportunity I get onto a live with somebody uh, just because I, it's, it's a system in your body that produces uh, cannabinoids that can both help with your mental and the, the physical of your body. It can help with mobility, with pain, with your mood. Um, and those same cannabinoids that your body creates, the cannabis plant creates. So when you consume cannabis, they basically, the cannabinoids stack on one, on one another like puzzle pieces and allow you to tackle, you know, ailments like pain, anxiety, nausea um, in ways that are natural and in healthy and healthy and, you know, in conjunction with what's already going on in your body. So there's also that element of it as well, um, of not shaming and destigmatizing the use of the, the cannabis plant, because at the end of the day, it's something that is rooted in, in my cultural history, you know, as a Latinx woman, and then also in my history as, you know, a, a human, a, a person that's just, it's just a part of my body. It's a part of my being. I mean, so viewers, thanks again for tuning in. This is QTVC Live, and we are here with Liz Marie, a.k.a. Motamami. So please check out Motamami on Instagram or visit motamamihai.com. Um, Liz, what do you want to talk about next? Do you want to continue to talk about the industry? The platform is, like, yours to to use. But also, do you want to talk about your products? Like, Yeah. We, I we love selling stuff. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about my products. Um <laughs> So I'm going to be offering per your recommendation. I want I have a, a lot of things that I can offer, but I just kind of want to um, narrow it down, I think, to uh, the items that I, I use most and also just what um, I encourage people to use as well. Um, so my first thing, and I'm going to pick up so I can take you guys over to my little display that I have going on over here. So I made a little display for you guys. It looks um, great. This shows all of my different products that I have available right now. Um, the first uh, bundle that I'm going to be offering is a Motamami sticker bundle. So all of these little guys here are going to be three by three stickers um, printed in gloss. Uh, mm -hmm. And a lot of the content of my stickers, I'll read them to you guys just so you guys can kind of see. It, it, it ties back to conscious cannabis like we're talking about. So just... When I made these stickers, these are probably some of the first creative items that I made as Mota Mami. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it was about destigmati de destigmatizing the idea of a pothead, you know, about destigmatizing the idea of somebody who's a cannabis consumer. And as much as I love Cheech and Chong, you know, stepping out of that, that's the only like visual association that you could have with somebody who is smoking weed. So I love these to put like on my, on my phone, on my laptop and everything like that. So this one says eliminate doubt, conjure gratitude. Like we were saying gratitude. Mm -hmm. um, this one is if it's an inaccessible to the poor, it's neither radical nor revolutionary. This is when a lot of my reflection about, you know, like prison industrial complex, the war on drugs. Um, then this one sacred plant magic. Because again, ancestral ties, cannabis is always going to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, then I have this guy that's plant over pill, plants over pills. Um, this one I, I really like as well. Um, this one I made a year ago when the opioid program started in Illinois. There's a program in Illinois where you can get your medical cannabis card for a 60 day period. If you're prescribed opioids, you can use that opioid prescription um, instead of a doctor's recommendation to get your card. So then this one is racism cannot be separated from capitalism by the OG Angela Davis. Uh, this one that says gas yourself up because cannabis has definitely helped me with my self-confidence yeah. tremendously i love lisa simpson me vale madre she's a whole mood all the time 
and then a brand sticker and then last one of my favorites the uh, la vida sigue life goes on um so that's what is this about nine stickers it's nine mm -hmm. stickers and it'll be twelve dollars for the bundle and that includes shipping that's incredible. So y'all, these stickers are glossy. They're high quality. You can stick them onto almost any surface and they are Motamami brand. So like you want to talk about conscious cannabis consumption, supporting an independent creative here in Chicago, um, who is a cannabis advocate. Um, please think about purchasing the sticker pack. This is the first product we're offering today on QTBC Live. This is the, was it the nine? It's a sticker pack by Motamami for $12. That includes shipping. If you're interested in buying this pack, please send $12 to QTBC Live on Venmo. If you don't have a Venmo account, find me QTBC Live at gmail.com and we'll get you situated. However, just want to reiterate the sticker pack by Motamami is $12. That includes shipping anywhere in the United States. Think about it. This is a badass gift for 420 for your loved ones, for yourself to decorate your binders, whatever, your, your car. Um, it's like the graphic design is super sharp. The printing is super dope. It's, it's an awesome product. I can vouch for it. Thank right, you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the next one is going to be my Be Gentle Tea Blend. So mm, you can see tea. that in mm. here. Um, this is a large, a large version of it. You would basically get two four ounce uh, tea packets. It's good to make it between um, six to eight cups of tea because you can reuse the tea packets. These mm -hmm. are the different ingredients. That's going to be organic chamomile, mm -hmm. manzanilla, um, rose again organic rose and then this is the cannabis product or the organic flower product that goes into it i do want to highlight this because this includes as you can see like these are the stems mm -hmm. from a organically grown cannabis plant the trim the fan leaves so this really i i really enjoy this product because it does show you know the medicine available in the cannabis plant not only in the flowers but in every single part um from the leaves to the to the stems to the to the twigs uh there's just a lot of medicine available when we talk about the endocannabinoid system there are different cannabinoids present in the raw version of the cannabis plant so before you apply you know a whole bunch of heat to it um there are certain cannabinoids that are available. And the way that I do make the tea, I decarboxylate. Um, so decarboxylate means add heat to activate the THC available in the cannabis plant. When I make the tea, I decarboxylate half of the uh, cannabis medicine. And then the other half, I leave it, um, I leave it without being uh, decarboxylated so that you can get a variety of the benefits from both the raw and the non-raw uh, cannabis plant. Uh, so I do have those tea blends available uh, for the Be Gentle tea blend. That's $15 for a two pack of that. And again, you can make anywhere between six to eight, um, eight ounce or eight ounce. Yeah, eight ounce uh, cups of tea with that. That's awesome. So this is two packs of the Be Gentle or is it $15 per pack? It's 15 for the two pack. Damn, that's a good mm -hmm. price. Mm -hmm. um, so y'all, I actually have this tea blend and I really enjoy it. I drink it usually at night. Um, I'll brew me a cup because at nights when I wind down and I do, I do want to say that the tea does help me. It helps calm me. It helps me calm me mentally, um, physically. I get sort of a body chill. Um, and it's a really pleasant way to experience plant medicine. Um, it's not usually the way I'm used to experiencing, um, cannabis or parts of the cannabis plant. Um, but it's really opened my consciousness of, of how that plant can be used in various ways. And it's a really great practice of utilizing the full plant, not just taking the flower and throwing the rest of the of the plant away like this is a way to not only I, don't, I guess make the practice more sustainable for growers for buyers like this is a fantastic product so y'all this two pack of the be gentle motamami high tea is $15 if you're interested in trying some of this tea out it has a very very chill flavor definitely a cannabis taste um but it's you know with a little bit of honey I think it's very very pleasant um mm -hmm. please send $15 to QTVC live on Venmo, find us at QTVC Live on Venmo, send $15, that includes shipping anywhere in the US to get your order in for the Be Gentle Tea by Motha Mami. Yes, I couldn't have said it better, Julia. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> yeah, I mean, to your point, it, that is one of, that's really why I like highlighting the tea, um, because it's not even something that 
you need me for. You guys can do this on your own. In Illinois, if you have your medical card, you are able to grow up to five cannabis plants on your own for your own medicinal use. Um, and I don't think a lot of the, the new growers out there realize that there are so many ways that you can use the cannabis plant, not just from the buds that you smoke. You can juice the leaves. You can use the stems for tea. You can make, I mean, I remember growing up and seeing my grandma having a mason jar filled with rubbing alcohol and cannabis leaves and uh, trim and twigs to make her salve that she would rub onto her to her joints for her aches and pains. I've made that before from, from you know, all of the, the plant byproducts. There's just so many ways to use the plant. And um, outside of whether you choose to, to purchase the Be Gentle blend from me, or I encourage you guys to at least take this as that spark that ignites the idea that you can take the medicine making into your own hands and use the full properties of the plant to make yourself well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really <laughs> responsible practice. And it's really, it's just, you know, it's interesting to engage with your own like personal kitchen ritual pertaining mm -hmm. to yeah, cannabis. It's, it's just, it's, it's a really pleasant tea. I can't recommend it more like seriously. So really quick y'all, we debuted the What the Mummy sticker pack. This was about nine stickers that ship anywhere in the United States for $12. If you're interested in the sticker pack, send $12 to QTBC Live on Venmo. Um, we also just debuted the Be Gentle two pack of tea. Um, so you get two packs of four ounce um, sachets of the Be Gentle Motomami uh, tea blend. And this is $15 for two packs. You can keep them both. You can share them. It's a great gift. Um, mm -hmm. And $15, please send that to at QTBC Live on Venmo. Ships anywhere in the United States. Shipping included. Okay. Perfect. And then the last thing that I'm offering today is going to be um, the Canna Conscious bundle. So this will offer the um, two pack of the Be Gentle Tea. It'll have a Motamami sticker. Um, and then the two items that it's going to feature that we haven't highlighted yet are going to be um, my zine, my first uh, cannabis scene that I came out with, which is my leaf note scene. It's a conscious cannabis consumption journal. Um, right. I have a mock-up here. This isn't the actual, like, what the actual version looks like because it won't have all these white lines, and it'll be on a matte printed paper and hand-bound and hand-stitched. Um, these are going to be made to order. Um, so just so you guys know, these will be made personally by me, individually for you. Um, but I didn't want to make a whole bunch of them up, and that takes a lot of time. So, no, I will be taking <laughs> time for you guys. Julia, you can speak to that, too. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, so the conscious, the leaf notes zine, um, I remember making this zine in my cubicle when I worked um, my assistant, uh, my executive assistant job like two and a half, three years ago. And I just didn't give a shit about what I was doing. So with all of my spare time, I decided to put together a journal for cannabis consumers kind of reminded me of like throwback of going back to the 90s and all those like cute journals that you would buy um what i like about it i, I give you like an intro of what's the purpose of the zine um what are your intentions that you can set with it uh but also throughout it i you i give you space to just write and journal when you're consuming. Um, one thing that I encourage all of the patients that I work with to do is when they're um, smoking or eating their edibles, whatever it might be, to journal about their experience so that they know um, what works for them and how the medicine works for them. Because cannabis is a very individual experience. It's a very subjective experience. I can't tell you, hey, you know, I was smoking this King Palm of whatever it might be, this is the effects that I got, there's no guarantee that's exactly how you're going to feel because everybody's endocannabinoid system is different. So we're all going to react differently to cannabis and to the different strains of cannabis. Um, so the only way to really figure out what works for you is to take the time to get to know what works for you. Um, yeah. So I always encourage people to just journal about their, about their consumption use, but also outside of that, just write whatever you feel like writing. I know for me, all of this creative stuff that you've seen would not be possible without me consuming cannabis first. <laughs> if any of you have, have seen me do like spoken word and poetry, none of that would happen if a bitch wasn't high. Like real life <laughs> It would not happen. Like the words would not come to me in the poetic way that they come to me, I don't think, without the you know help 
of Mama Ganja. I don't think it would happen. So this is just an opportunity for you to be able to write all of that. I also too it have like a coloring page in there just because who doesn't like coloring when they're high. Some of the Motamami um, images and everything like that just as positive reinforcements. And at the end, I do give like an area for final thoughts. And then there's also a glossary just because Oh, great. Like I said, there's an there's uh, inequality in access to certain terms and knowledge about cannabis, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be empowered to have the use of the language that everybody else is using. So I want to make sure to include that in there. So that's a Leaf Notes journal. It'll be a hand-stitched, hand-bound uh, journal that you will be able to get. In addition to that and the, and the can of tea blend, you would also get my Motamami um, lifted uh, rose toner. So mm -hmm. this is a cannabis infused witch hazel and rose water face toner. Um, I use this regularly. I keep it in my medicine cabinet. I like to store mine in the fridge just because since it is uh, freshly made rose water, it does do better in a cold and dark place. I also like a cold spritz of water on my face in the beginning of the day. It does really help for my inflammation or any puffiness that I might wake up with. Um, so this guy, it has a really beautiful scent to it. I typically like to do it either right onto my hands or onto, if you're using it more to like tackle puffiness onto like a cotton swab and then just dab it directly onto your face. Um, this guy is, like I said, it's something that I use every day and it's really beautiful and really fun to make because I get to just stand in front of a giant cauldron basically of rose water and <laughs> cannabis and it's a really fun experience for me. So no, I had a good time making this guys. Um, so yeah, that's the canna canna uh, canna face uh, toner, and yeah, outside of that, so the conscious cannabis uh, or the canna conscious bundle will be the four ounce face toner, the um, two pack of canna tea, the leaf mm -hmm. note zine, and then I'll also throw in an assorted motamami sticker, and that's. It's actually a discounted price if you get the bundle for the individual items. So it's thirty five dollars, including shipping for the bundle. That's a great price. I have all these products just to let you know. So this is the can of conscious pack. Correct. This is the final. Pack I think that mm -hmm. we're reviewing on the show today with Motamami here, um, and this pack includes um, a Motamami sticker. One of the stickers from the sticker pack. Um, two of the um, thank you, Liz. Your fantastic Vanna White. Vanna, Vanna White point two two point oh. Um, one of two of the goodness gracious, what was the tea blend again? What was the it be gentle, be gentle, be gentle tea blend? Mm -hmm. This is the Motamami brand, a be gentle tea brand. I have this tea, I really enjoy it at nighttime. Um, so you get two sachets, two packs of that, two four ounce packs of the be gentle tea blend, along with one of the stickers. You get the Leaf Notes journal, which is a phenomenal publication. I really admire this publication because it encourages you to engage with cannabis in whichever way you want, but to also reflect upon how you're feeling. What you, what are you thinking? Um, what strain are you using? How is it making you feel? You know, it's it's a really responsible and conscious way to document your journey. And mm -hmm. I can't think of a better time to be doing that than right now. You know, hopefully we're taking some time for ourselves during this like time of COVID to like reevaluate a lot. And I think, I really think this journal is gonna be um, helpful to so many people. So. Really quick, so we're still going over the Canna Conscious bundle with Motamami, which included one sticker, two of the Be Gentle uh, four ounce tea packets, one of the Leaf Notes journal zine, um, and then one of the facial toners. Correct. Um, and the facial toner is lovely. I have this. Thank you, Liz, for giving me this facial toner. It's of lovely. course. It feels great. You can even carry it in your purse. It's a glass bottle though, so it's like a high end product it's really nice it's it's like boutique made handmade um and this toner is made with rose water and cannabis and it helps fight inflammation it just helps hydrate the face i know we're entering the springtime but here in chicago we've got winter we've got spring we've got winter and spring you know the days fluctuate so it's really important to like hydrate the skin otherwise it's just it's going to be hard regulating like the response that your skin's having during this time so this toner actually really helps with that i've been using it oh and this yeah. pack is 35 dollars. so if you're interested <laughs> in this pack please send 35 dollars to at qtvc live on venmo and that includes shipping anywhere in the united states that's one heck of a deal um okay so that was my spiel i'm gonna i can i'm gonna re-go through everything again um but do you have like i'm, I'm looking at the comments we've, we've just got so many people that 
are saying that they love you, that they love your product. Um, Tres Gatos Press, thank you. Uh, just they're responding to, you know, to everything you're saying. Is there anything else you wanted to say to the crowd before I, um, before I reiterate all these lovely products? And if anybody has any questions, please feel free to like, type them in the comments. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Yeah, no, I mean, I first of all, just thank you everybody for stopping in. I know it's mm -hmm. it's 420 eves. And even though we're we're stuck at home in the midst of COVID, there are plenty of things that you can be doing. So thank you for taking the time to to hang out with me and with Julia, and just um, further the conversation around conscious cannabis and further the conversation around, you know, just weed and and cannabis consumers in general. Um, with more conversations like this, we're able to break down the stigma, we're able to, you know, fight towards what I want a cannabis culture in Chicago to look like. So thank you guys for for being a part of that. Um, if you have any questions and want to hit me up personally, you can follow follow me on IG at Mota underscore mommy. Um, you can hit me up through the comments here. Uh, I will full disclosure. I take a minute to respond to, <laughs> to messages. I'm letting everybody know it's 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 my personality. I can't help it, but I will get back to you. Um, I will also after this, um, hopefully next week, be releasing some more accessible resources on my Instagram and on my website, um, including links on how to apply for your medical card, um, uh, links on how to be able to access my my products if you guys want to um yeah so i just want to be creating kind of more of an accessible platform so look forward for that in like the next week that's great i can't wait i'm super excited about this um but y'all i just want to reiterate we've gone through three products with mocha mommy here number one was the sticker pack the sticker pack is 12 dollars. ships anywhere in the united states shipping is included in that 12 dollars. send 12 dollars to qtvc live on venmo interested in that pack second item is the be gentle tea blend the mocha mommy be gentle tea blend. You get two four ounce packets of this. And that is $15. It's a lovely tea brand. Um, $15 includes shipping anywhere in the United States. If you're interested in trying this tea, please send $15 to at QTVC Live on Venmo. Uh, and the third product, which we, which we just finished going over, was the Can of Conscious pack. Fantastic, like incredible deal, um, which includes a sticker, one of the Leaf Notes journals, one of the Cannabis Rose Facial Toner, and then two the two packs of the Be Gentle Motamami brand um, mm -hmm. tea blend. So that pack, that's like the blowout pack, that's $35, and that includes shipping anywhere in the United States. Send $35 to at QTBC Live on Venmo. If you don't have a Venmo account, email me, QTBCLive at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you as soon as we can. We'll process your order that way. Um, we're still getting like such lovely feedback regarding your product, regarding just people that love you. I hope that you're seeing this. Like, Thank you, guys. You know, yeah, I, I can't advocate for your products anymore. Like, I can't, actually. I can go on for a long time. Um, <laughs> But, um, but y'all, if you have questions for me, email me, qtvclive at gmail.com. Please follow up with Motamami with Liz Marie here. Visit motamamihigh.com. And if y'all have any questions, just holler at us. Thank you, Liz, for making time for me today. I really appreciate it. Of course. You. I had fun. Thank you for taking the time to hang out with me, too. Miss you, oh, Julia. Yeah. It's good to <laughs> see your face. Even if it's virtually, Mamita, I'm happy to see you. Hey, same, Liz. I have so much love and respect for you, and then also your practice. Like, thank you for being you and thank you for doing what you're doing. Um, viewers, QTVC like cuties, let us know if y'all need anything. In the meantime, have a great 420. I know for some of y'all, it's 420 every day. Hey, have, a <laughs> have fun, everybody. Stay safe. Yes, please. Roll up separate joints for one another. That sounds good. I'm going to go smoke the one I found on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, we're signing out. Provecho, Bye. everybody. Peace out.